What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. I know it's been a while. Uh, I'll explain why it's been a while at the end of the video, but I have a lot of new pickups since it's been a couple months since I last posted on the channel, but I figured I'd show you guys. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. We've got a lot of shoes, pants, t-shirts, few outerwear pieces, um, but yeah. A lot of great stuff, a lot of stuff that I've wanted for a really long time, so I'm excited to share it with you guys. So I think we're going to start it off with the shoes. I have four new pairs of shoes that I got. Um, honestly, there's one pair that's really crazy. The other ones are pretty normy, but um, yeah, anyway, let's get into it. So, start with these bad boys. Um, I turned the page, I changed my mind, and honestly what I've been into lately is like I want my stuff clean and not thrashed up. In the past I used to wear a lot more thrashed clothes and thrashed vintage. At this point in my life I don't really want to do that anymore for my stuff to be pretty clean. Even like these jeans, like this knee blowout here annoys me, but I feel like the repair would probably annoy me more, so I've left it at it as is, but anyway. I've moved on from wearing vintage made in USA Converse um, just for the fact that the pairs that I want are really expensive, especially if I want them to be as clean as I want them or like dead stock is basically how I want to buy them. Um, so I moved on from those and I figured I would give these a try. These are a pair of made in Japan Converse Chuck Taylors. Uh, I will say these are pretty damn close to being a one-to-one -one of the vintage versions. They're super comfortable. I've been wearing them and trying to break them in. My pinky toes are killing me because I was wearing New Balances before these. But I picked these up on eBay for like 150 bucks, and I would definitely recommend these over the Chuck 70s for sure. I'd say it comes down to personal preference if you want to get these over a vintage pair. But the reason I would get these over a vintage pair is just because the price difference is like hundreds of dollars that you're just gonna lose if you beat the crap out of a vintage pair. Cause I was wearing a 60s pair before this that were like pretty much the exact same. But um, I ran through those in about like eight months, I would say like they were pretty close to dead stock and I ran through them in eight months. So for me, it's just more worth it to buy something like this for 150 bucks and beat the crap out of them and then be brand new when I get them and not have to worry about that at all than to buy the actual vintage pair and lose like 600 bucks. So anyway, show you guys the details on these. These are like really close to the 80s made in USA cut and they have Converse All-Star made in Japan badge on the back and they do have that made in Japan on the inside too, I'll say the material is a lot uh, softer than the Chuck 70s. The Chuck 70s are really stiff. They do have the like extra padded sole like the Chuck 70s do. And the most notable thing to me is on the, the back of these, like they're much slimmer. Like they grip your heel like perfectly. So I don't feel my feet flopping around in these. Not that I really felt that, but it just is like a really close fit and yeah they do have like enough room in the toe box which was the number one thing that i was concerned about versus the vintage pairs is like my 60s pair fit me better than any other pair of converse i've ever had i'd say these fit maybe a little bit worse than those but not by much they still fit great especially if you go with your like true converse size like these are a 10 and a half and i wear a 10 and a half so yeah, uh, I am trying to get a pair of the Addict ones, which are the one-to-one -one repros of the ones that I want, but those sell out pretty quick. So, yeah. So I just have these for now, but in the future, I'm gonna try to get the Converse Addict version, which is the actual one-to-one -one of my favorite Converse model. Uh, but it's just, you can't buy them used in my size. It's very hard to find in my size. So that's why I don't have them. Next pair of shoes that I got is a black pair, so I have a white pair, a black pair. Um, can't go wrong with a black pair of Chucks. These are kind of like my beater sneaker right now. 
just wear these if I go to the bins or if I know it's gonna be dirty or whatever. Actually, I wear my Vans if it's gonna be dirty because they're already beat, but um, yeah. Not much more to say about these that I didn't say about those. So, show you guys the box because I think the box is pretty cool. As you can see, super retro style. Converse All-Star, Converse Made in Japan. Yeah, nice box. Came with some hang tags too, if I can find them. But yeah, the original Converse, just they're super nice. I would definitely recommend picking these up. If you wanna buy them, you can buy them on eBay for like, you can buy them on White Rabbit or you can buy them you can buy them on White Rabbit or you can buy them on eBay. It's basically the same price. They'll be about 150 to 160 bucks. The only thing is sometimes they'll have certain colorways out of stock. So I was gonna buy them on White Rabbit and it probably would have been like $10 cheaper, but they didn't have the black ones in stock. So on Converse JP. So I bought them on eBay and then somebody went to the actual Converse store and then bought them and shipped them over. Um, so yeah, just look up Converse Made in Japan and you'll find them. The next ones are fucking insane. And yeah, I don't know what to do with them, but I have wanted a pair of these for so, so long. I have been on the hunt for a pair of these for a very long time, even just used, like literally years I've wanted a pair of these. Uh, a used pair of these to wear but shout out the homie I got these dead stock made in USA Converse Jack Purcells um, with the original tags and everything these ones are like 80s uh, black canvas the Kurt Cobain you know the Kurt Cobain shoe basically and they're my size so yeah I haven't, like, like I've tried them on and they fit perfect and they look fucking sick, but I don't know that I can get myself to actually, like, wear these out, um, just because of the value of these, I'll put it that way, and how hard it is to find a pair of these, so for now they're sitting as a display in my apartment, and if I'm ever balling enough to undes these, I probably will. But, um, cause I don't like immediately need the money right now. So I'm not really planning on selling these. So like, don't DM me about them cause I won't sell them to you. Um, but I just wanted to show them because they're fucking crazy. These are honestly probably the best pair of shoes that I've ever had. So yeah. And the fit and everything, like they are perfect. They are just as good as you would think they would be. You can see original. Jack Purcell hang tag, never been taken off or anything. Uh, just been laced up and tried on basically. Converse made in USA, got the nice back patch. They have the black sole instead of the light blue sole. And the black canvas is just the most sought after colorway of these. They feel really nice on. Like I said, I've tried them on, but I haven't like worn them outside or anything. I just threw them on when I got them. I was gonna undes them because I was low on the price on these. I thought they were worth like less than half of what they actually are. Um, but they did have the original box and everything too. So, Authentic American Classic, Jack Purcell. See the top of the box, side, made in America. Yeah, these things are freaking crazy. Um, they're just gonna sit as a display until I decide what I wanna do with them or until I need money, but I don't need money right now. So not really planning on selling these. Although I will say if you're watching this video and you know like a good one-to-one -one repro of these, um, comment them down below because I don't like the new ones because they're just not as chunky as these are, but I haven't found like any made in Japan ones or anything like that. So yeah. I want a pair of repros to wear, but holding on to the OGs because there's no reason to sell them. All right, last shoe. Find the caved, kind of. 
I'm not gonna say Mule Boys or anything like that because I think it's stupid, but got this nice pair of Yucatan Birkenstock Boston style mules and this like mustard brown colorway. They have a pair that are all black of these that are really sick. Um, but I went with this pair because I feel like this color is just what I wear. Um, but these are like an elevated take on the Birkenstock Boston. They have the softest suede ever. Uh, and then they feature a cork float bed like Birkenstocks, but they, they're kind of gross because I've been breaking them in, but they have this leather lining on them, which has honestly been a little bit annoying since I've been breaking them in. Cause if I wear socks, like they are a pain in the ass to wear. So I just don't wear socks with them, but, uh, yeah. And then they have the little roping detail on the side and then a crepe sole. So they're kind of bouncy. Um, but yeah, and they have like a, the reason I bought these is cause I wanted the Rick Owens ones because I like the slimmer shape of these versus the regular Boston's. And that's what I liked about the Rick Owens ones, but these ones are just cheaper than the Rick Owens ones and less like of a meme, I guess. But yeah, I've been wearing these all the time. I throw them on all the time, still breaking them in. But yeah, great pair of shoes that honestly, happy I bought. I was like not on the Birkenstock wave, but uh, yeah, now I got the Yucatan ones. So anyway, uh, let's get on to pants and stuff, I guess. So now on to the pants. I've got probably five pairs of pants that I'm actually keeping. I might as well show you this too. Um, I bought this a while ago, but this is like a vintage studded belt. I've been wanting one of these for a long time. And yeah, this one's got like studded on flowers, which I like better than the traditional design. And yeah, I mean, that's just a nice high quality belt. This one's in great condition. Um, and yeah, not much more to it. It's just a sick belt and it's exactly what I was looking for. So finally have a belt, uh, put it that way. All right. Um, so yeah, basically we're going to start. There's like, honestly only a couple styles that I wear anymore. Kind of, I wouldn't say burned out on fashion or anything. It's just, I know exactly what I like and that's all I wear. Um, so there's a few basic silhouettes I like. So the first pants that I got are this nice pair of Jill Sander pants. These are not the Uniqlo ones, like it's J plus, I guess, which was like a couple of years ago. Anyway, I got these like brand new with tags at the flea for like 30 or 40 bucks. And they are like legitimately, if I didn't have the next pair I'm gonna show you, I'd wear these all the time. They're kind of, they kind of have that like military shell pant, like over pant style that's really popular right now because of freaking Bella Hadid, which I have some of those pairs that are going to post somewhat soon. And I have a ton of baggy pants on the website. So if you want, if you're into the baggy pants look, link down below the website. Anyway, these are like a size XL, but because they have this cinch waistband, I've figured out how I can make them fit my waist. So yeah, I cinched them in. They have a super, super wide and baggy fit to them. Honestly, they're kind of like pajama pants. They're like super comfortable. The blend is insane on these. Like this is the blend. Okay, just so you know how damn comfortable these are. 53% cotton, 45% linen, 2% silk. They're literally like insane. They're, these are like the perfect summer pants or just like laying around pants, um, but yeah. Really nice blue color, really goes in with my wardrobe and they have like a little bit of a textured finish. You can see they have nice pockets and everything too. Yeah, these are literally great. They're just like, and they were so cheap at the flea. I'm blessed to have come up on these bad boys. And uh, yeah, like I said, I, wear the, I would wear these more if I didn't buy the next pair of pants I'm gonna show you guys, but still wear them a lot uh still a great pair of pants to have in the wardrobe so 
Next pair of pants. Holy grail for me, honestly. I've wanted a pair of these for so damn long. And I'm very particular about my stuff. Everybody should know this by now. So I've had opportunities to get the worst version of these in the past. And I've passed every single time. So I was like, I need to get this version. And I finally did. I got them for a steal. I got them in my size. And they are honestly probably one of my most worn items of clothing right now. But we have the World War II USMC P44 monkey pants. So if you are into vintage, you know exactly what these bad boys are. These are the pants that the Marines wore in the Pacific Theater. HBT, obviously this pair is super faded out. Um, super comfortable fabric. Honestly, one of the most comfortable fabrics I would say would be HBT, especially when you get this World War II one super soft and broken in. These pairs rip like, this pair rips like crazy just because they're so worn in, but I deal with it. Said I'm not wearing thrashers, but I'll make an exception. Normally they had a huge pocket on the back, but the soldiers would literally rip it off because it was so damn uncomfortable. So this pair doesn't have the back pocket, but it does have the most notable part, which is the two huge 3D pockets on the sides. Super wide leg fit and baggy, high-waisted, uh, just a super classic pant. And yeah, I'll show you guys the details up close so you can see. So got the herringbone material, 3D pockets with the USMC donut buttons. And the thing that I like stylistically about these the most that I didn't know when I bought them is how they're the pockets are actually stitched on. So this side is completely stitched down and then this side is left open. I thought it was completely left open. So like when you're wearing these, it kind of gives the effect that you're wearing like a skirt because the pockets come out like that on both sides. So it looks cooler than you would think. Um, but yeah, you can see where they ripped off the back pocket. And yeah, super comfortable pair of pants. I literally wear these like, if I don't wear 501s, I'm wearing these pretty much most days. And if I get bored of 501s in these, then I wear the Jill Sander pants or the next stuff I'm gonna show you guys. But uh, great pair of pants, holy grail. Been wanting these for years. Now I need to get the frog skin set because I have completed this set. Um, so yeah. Hype about those. This is another pair I was hyped about too, and I got both of these for steals. Um, I've wanted a pair of these for a while. This isn't the exact colorway I wanted, but um, I got them for a steal. Shout out to Homie, and they fit perfectly. These are a pair of 60s Levi's 519s in this peak, mater peak cotton material. They look like corduroys. They have like a slimmer fit than a 501. Um, and yeah, these are like nicknamed the Californian cut. So yeah, basically they're just like kind of the same fit as a 505 maybe, but maybe a little bit slimmer than that. And they're just made out of a lightweight peak cotton, which uh, Visvim actually uses in a jacket I want to get, but I'm not going to put you guys on. So um, yeah, I'm going to gatekeep that until I get it. But anyway. These ones are like a cream color. It might look more white than it is in person, but yeah. Talon Zip Fly, you can see they kind of look like corduroy, but it's actually like a lightweight, breathable cotton material. And then you got back patch. And of course they are biggies. I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to see that or not, but yeah. Great pair of pants, these are pretty rare. Um, there's like a black pair that I wanted more than this pair, but the homie hooked it up on these. So yeah, couldn't say no, been wanting them for a while. Pretty rare to find those, honestly. So onto the rest of the Levi's, it's just gonna be 501s. This is something that has eluded me for a while. You guys would be surprised, but um, we have a nice pair of 
80s whitewash redline 501s uh, with no rips is the key here. I've blown out every single pair that I have. I don't like rips in my jeans anymore, really. So this pair is like the perfect pair of red lines for me. They're broken in, they feel nice, but they don't have a ton of rips. Uh, yeah, I don't like ripped jeans anymore. They have a nice sand wash, not the craziest sand wash in the world, but they do have some tasteful paint splatters. And of course, they're selvage. Um, but yeah, nothing too crazy. They fit really nice. One of my followers sold them to me on Grail for a great price, so I appreciate you. Um, but yeah, see, a little bit of paint splatters, nothing too crazy. The only rip is this little thing right here. Back. They're not biggies or anything, but these are like the best light wash pairs of jeans ever, in my opinion. So I'm literally addicted to these things, but yeah. Redline Selvage. Essential pair of jeans. You cannot go wrong with a pair of these. And I prefer these over the single stitch version because they actually uh, wash these out to be a light wash unlike the single stitch versions, which will go from dark wash to the white wash looks a little bit different. I personally don't think it looks as good. So yeah, I'm very, very picky about my jeans and these ones are perfect. So appreciate you. Uh, the next pair is another example of that. These are just a pair of one wash 80s 501s. These are not selvage or anything, but I buy these like crazy if you have them don't care about the sizes really or anything um but yeah these ones are early 80s i believe these ones are like let's see let's just check the tag because it's still on here and it's still crispy i think these ones are 81 actually let's see yep these ones are 81 which is painful because they are transition red lines basically but just this super dark pair of strength to fit 501s. Still have the little fuzzies. These have been washed like one time. There's no marbling or anything on them, which I'm really particular about too. So yeah, these ones are great. I wish they were red lines, but they're not. I'll show you guys, they are the copper overlock stitch, which means they're made with the red line material, but they're not actually red lines, so they don't go for as much. But it's just a cool detail to know if you're looking for a pair but yeah these ones fit perfect too don't wear them quite as much since it's the summer but once it's a little bit cooler i will be wearing these all the time i actually got rid of my repros because i just i don't know i just like wearing the originals uh on to the shorts and then we'll be done with pants oh actually there's two more pairs i'll go grab one um but yeah anyway we have my only bins, well, actually no, there's a couple more bins finds on this list, but these are fucking sick. These are a pair of double RL shorts I found at the bins. They have kind of like an Aloha print, super 50s inspired. Uh, they're made out of like a lightweight cotton twill. And these ones are like two sizes up, but they still fit me, so. They have like a super baggy fit on me, but yeah, just perfect pair of short shorts. Honestly, the uniform when it's like this weather out, which you guys can't tell, but it's like 60 to 70 today. So I just throw these on with this sweatshirt, the Birkenstocks and chill or the Gats maybe. But um, yeah, anyway, vintage double RL. They're fully lined with like this cotton material too, which is nice. And yeah, size 38 made in USA, but they fit me because of the elastic waistband and everything. But yeah, super nice pair of shorts for the summer. Those are the pair of shorts I've been wearing the most lately, honestly, I wear shorts. Next pair I haven't worn yet, but I freaking love these things. These are just a pair of 80s Ocean Pacific corduroy shorts. I want a pair of the Patagonia ones really bad. Uh, any of the Patagonia ones actually from this era, but uh, I haven't found a pair yet. So this is what we're with. Nice, cool, great colorway. I haven't worn these yet. Maybe I'll sell them, who knows? But yeah, Main USA Ocean Pacific shorts. The Bush ones are great too. If you guys are looking for a great pair of shorts, 
check out the Ocean Pacific ones, the vintage ones. They're great. Um, I'll go grab the other pairs of shorts and I'll show you guys those real quick. All right, so I got two pairs of these. I'm just going to show you guys one pair, but uh, yeah, I went on a kick of buying stuff brand new that I just needed to buy, so this is part of that. Uh, we just have these nice Tracksmith running shorts. I think these ones are like five inch inseam. Nice quality shorts. I just wear these to the gym. I've been hitting the gym again. I'll explain what's been up at the end of the video. I'm not going to get into it now so you guys can see the pickups, but I got these in this navy colorway and I also got them in a black colorway and yeah, I wear them every day to the gym. So that's what's up with these. Moved on from Lululemon. Great pair of shorts. Check them out. Sponsor me. I don't know. Um, but yeah, that being said, let's get into the t-shirts. I'm going to bust through these really quick and then we're almost done. So thanks for sticking with me if you have this long. Another bins find, we have this clean 60s Munzing wear blank t-shirt and white. There's no stains or anything on this. It's paper thin. It's the perfect white t-shirt. My only gripe with this one is I wish it was like a little bit shorter, but what are you going to do? I got it at the bins. It costs like literally nothing, but yeah, super cool tag on the neck, of course. And yeah paper thin, a little bit of a sheen just because of the blend they were using, but uh, yeah, great white t-shirt. Cannot go wrong with those. Can't get enough of those, which is why the next pickup on our list is another white t-shirt from the bins. This one is a little bit more grimy. I like the fit of this one a little bit better than that one, but I wear the other one more. This one's just like another 60s. This one's like a 60s, 70s Hanes size XL and yeah it's got a little bit of yellowing it's got some stains on it um a few holes but yeah great blank and specifically I like when my t-shirts have this shorter sleeve length than the 90s ones because I feel like that just looks cool um especially for my blanks is what I prefer but you can see stained up paper thin of course great white t-shirt for the summer uh next one is off the homie casey we did a trade been wanting one of these for a while but we have this like 80s ish apple computer tee with the big rainbow print apple logo i've had a couple apple tees i've sold every single one of them it was like og grail of mine um but i just kept listing them and then this one i just didn't list so yeah Connecting Point Computer Centers, Colorado Springs, the Apple Hit has a few stains throughout, but super clean graphic. This one fits me perfectly, so keeping it, that's basically how it goes. Uh, this one, it's just super cheap. I might sell it because I don't love the fit, but I love the old Levi's promos. If you go on my website, you can tell which ones I like more because I'll put them up for ridiculous tax. So this one's just not hitting the site. I mean, maybe it will because it's a little bit pilled up, but a whole lot of Levi's, 80s print. Uh, yeah, just a great Levi's t-shirt. So this one I bought before I moved actually. And then, yeah, I just got it because it got delivered to my home address. Um, but we have Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band. Uh, born in the USA t-shirt with all the tour dates on the back. This one was pretty much dead stock, so super clean, nice graphic, fits how I want. Honestly, Bruce Springsteen's based, but the main reason that I got this is because he's wearing like literally what I wear every day in this album cover. So he's wearing like the Biggie Levi's nice and worn in. That's what I'm wearing today. Studded belt, white t-shirt. Yeah, not much to it besides that. And uh, he's a socialist, so. The next one's probably the biggest heater out of the t-shirts. I've wanted one of these for a long time. Finally got one. We have the Lauren Hill wrap tee. Um, Do-wop, that thing on the back. The Miss Education print. 
This one's paper thin, nice and worn in, great oversized fit. I think it was stretched at one point because when I threw it through the wash and dryer, like it shrunk down to like my perfect measurements for how I would want a wrap tee to fit. So I'm happy about that. It's a little bit longer than I wanted it when it came in. But yeah, single stitch, the tag's been ripped out. So it's probably like a short hills or something like that, just because those paper tags came out. Um, but yeah, nice faded in print. There is another Lauren Hill wrap tee that's really the one that I want, but it's just hard as fuck to find, and I got this one for a good price. So I'm holding on to this one until I can find the other one. Um, but yeah, Lauren Hill, amazing artist. Can't go wrong. I'll show you the details because I just, I love wrap tees so much. And I kind of think that you should be buying wrap tees right now because I think the price is going to go way up. So, uh... Yeah, if you want one, buy it now, basically, is what I'm trying to say. Because a lot of people are panicking. But you can see it's got the classic detail where there's all these little pictures of her within the letters. And then you have all the pictures of her on the front. And then when you flip it over the back, you have the Miss Education poster. This is my favorite part of the entire tee. I love that picture of her. The only one that's better than that is she's wearing a cowboy hat and pointing at you. That's the other one I want. And then another picture of Lauren Hill. Um, but yeah, amazing t-shirt. One of my favorite t-shirts in my collection. Most I've ever spent on a t-shirt. And honestly, it'll probably stay like that for a while. So yeah, on to the next one. Haven't decided what I'm gonna do with this one. But we have, I finally bought a Radiohead shirt. I just caved and bought it. 2007 in rainbows promo tee i guess you could call it um but yeah i bought this one on depop for like 100 bucks and the reason i wouldn't keep it is because i don't like the neck at all it's ugly but besides that it's fine um but it's got the lyrics to my favorite radiohead song or one of my favorite radiohead songs which is nude it says you'll go to hell for what your dirty mind is thinking and then, yeah, the cool thing about the print on these is it's actually printed on the opposite side. So the shirt's actually super thin. And if you flip it, you can see that more clearly. So yeah, you can see, you can see they printed it on this side like and just like put a ton of ink on it so that it bled through to the other side. So yeah. Like I said, I haven't decided if I'm gonna sell this or keep it. I haven't worn it yet, but um, I just don't like that neck and I'm trying to figure out what to do with it because even shrinking it, like it's just so thin. Like that's how thin the neck is. Um, but yeah, anyway, never thought I would spend $100 on a 2007 t-shirt, but here we are. Um, done with the t-shirts. I'll just bust it through. We'll just bust it all the way through. Um, this one is a 90s Arizona State Athletic Department Champion Reverse Weave hoodie. Uh, I sold off all my other hoodies besides this one after I got it. Uh, I do want like a 70s one because I like those, but this one fits really nice. Super boxy fit. It's still got the strings. It's a little bit distressed, but besides that, there's no stains and it's clean. Throw this on every single morning. I've thrown on a reverse weave every single morning for like probably a year or two now. So needed another reverse weave hoodie in the collection. Um, but yeah, and I got hooked up on it. I paid like 80 bucks at the flea for this. ASU is my alma mater. So I collect their vintage stuff specifically like reverse weaves and anything that's super fucking old I'll buy. Not like 90s stuff is basically what I'm saying. Um, but yeah, it's that. And then probably the best thing that I've got recently, if you know me, you know, I've been buying Biggie type threes for a while and this is the best one that I've ever gotten. So yeah, I paid up for it. Um, I'd gladly pay the price that I paid for this one again, but, uh, yeah, I wear this all the time. I'm happy I bought it because, yeah, these are, this one's just rare. I'll give you guys the details. So this one is a 
19 like 62 Levi's 558 double X um, so yeah if you don't know the difference between the type threes there's the 70505 version which is the longer version that they're still making today basically I mean they've tweaked it since then but that's basically what it is and then there's the 557 version which is the more cropped fit that fits like a type 2 and the 558 is the first run of that one produced in 1962 with longer sleeves and it fits tall people really nice and obviously I'm tall so yeah this one is like a size 44 unfortunately it does not have the patch anymore but I'll live with that really nice color nice dark wash I'd say it's about 80% there copper stitching and everything and the button stamps are 17 and not the D slash zero stamp that you normally see on these so yeah absolutely not for sale so don't ask me about it and I know how much it's worth kind of over posting denim and stuff like that on my page just because I don't like dealing with people it kind of already gets sold to specific people um yeah that's how I do it now I don't post it on the page but yeah I don't know if you're gonna be able to see the 17 stamp but it's there big e tab and yeah Honestly, this jacket has me about ready to sell my Type 2 just because I want to get a bigger Type 2 and a bigger Type 1 because I've gained weight. So, yeah. Anyway, besides the point, great, great jacket. Very happy with the price I paid. If you're selling Big E Type 3s, I will buy them pretty much. So, yeah. Anyway. That is it for the pickup section of the video. It's probably gonna be like a half hour long video. So if you've made it this far, I appreciate you. Uh, and yeah, I'm gonna cut this short and then I'm gonna talk about what I've been doing for the past couple months. So if you've made it this far into the video, you are definitely one of my real fans. So I might as well give it to you real talk. Um, but yeah, basically what's happened is the last video I made is when I started getting sick, but long story short, I ended up having bronchitis for like a month. I mean, that's how long that illness lasts. So couldn't really get out of bed or anything. I was coughing all the time, it wasn't fun. So that's why I kind of start, stopped posting for a while. And then after that, I realized like that I just had needed a break from social media because I've been posting, I mean, I was posting on Instagram or TikTok or basically posting somewhere seven days a week for like two years straight of my life and I didn't realize how that was affecting me until like I couldn't do it anymore and had to take a break from it so yeah I've been focusing on taking a break separating myself from social media because honestly it just does not make me happy like a lot of good things in my life have come out of social media and doing social media but it also has given me terrible anxiety in the past and like caused me to lose my shit a couple times so uh yeah and i don't want to be an influencer really to be completely honest and i was following a lot of like influencer growth plans when that's like not really what i want to do with my life so um yeah i've taken a break from that i'm gonna get i'm getting back to posting consistently on my instagram i'm gonna post more reels and stuff like that but the style of content that i want to put out is more focused on the brand that I'm trying to make and the styles that I'm trying to curate for people on Instagram versus like telling people when shit is or putting people on game or whatever and it's not about gatekeeping or anything it's just like that's just not the content I want to make anymore just point blank um and I enjoy curating you know the the direction of the page now is I buy the stuff that I'm selling on there and I am trying to curate like styles and aesthetics that I personally gravitate to at a more affordable price point than the stuff that I personally like. And I'm not trying to be like a cheap page. I'm not trying to be at the bins all the time. I'm not trying to do all this shit because other people told me to do it. I'm trying to do what I enjoy doing more so. Um, and I think I will be successful if I do that. So that's been the focus of that page. The YouTube channel, a lot of people ask me like, 
recommendations for vintage, how to date stuff, all that stuff. I really just don't want to make that content. This page or this channel, I want to be more of just like I show stuff that I like. Um, and yeah, that's just what I want to do with it. I enjoy making this type of content and showing you guys stuff that I, I'm no longer going to show on my business page anymore. Um, and I'm not going to do it on my personal Instagram too. Um, so that's basically what this channel is because I still am like passionate about fashion and stuff like that. But uh, it's just like if I post my personals on my business page, I'm going to have a million people lowballing me on them. And it just annoys me. Uh, or like, yeah, I just don't want to post like, I don't know. I, I don't particularly like like fucking top five pants for summer, uh, fucking how to date this content. Like I don't like making that content. So why would I make it? Especially if I don't want to be a content creator really like, or an influencer really like I want to make content to sell stuff. I don't want to make content because I like making content, but I don't want to make content to like try to turn it into a job. If that makes sense. Cause that's not my job. My job is flipping crap. And there's a lot of stuff I do like behind the scenes now that you guys don't see that's making me more money than trying to drive myself crazy on social media. So yeah, anyway, that's what's been up. Um, what else? Bought a new truck. I'm gonna, I made a video about it. I'll probably post it eventually, but I bought a brand new truck. Um, and I've been really focused on decorating my apartment and getting my space to be like not a workspace anymore and into a space that I like to live in. So I may or may not make an apartment tour video once it's all said and done. Um, but like, I don't know, I'm 50, 50 on if I actually want to do that or not. So, uh, yeah, anyway, basically this channel is for myself. It's not for you guys. I'm sorry. But um, yeah, I'm just trying to be more mindful of what I do on social media and get some semblance of work-life balance because I have not had that for a long time. And I've just realized I've hit a lot of my goals. I'm going to be fine. I can support myself, et cetera, et cetera. And I don't need to be on the rat race 24 seven because somebody told me to do that. Um, especially when it doesn't make me happy. To do that um but yeah anyway thank you guys for watching especially if you made it this far in this video i know it was a very long video um yeah like comment subscribe obviously and have an amazing day